Guys, I've said this before and I'm going to say it again today. I have some of the sharpest viewers and for months now, what you've all been saying correctly, even before a lot of others were, is that old Donnie is undeniably desperate right now. But I don't think any of us really understood just how quickly that desperation is ramping up. Based on what multiple reports are suggesting, just from the last few minutes and hours, that, you know, obviously he was planning on making some sort of announcement, some sort of statement in the coming weeks, but there are rumors he may make that announcement tonight. He may seize the opportunity, basically commandeering this next rally he's speaking at in Ohio, to make this announcement. And this is happening for a couple reasons. One, he wants to absolutely take credit for any GOP success, you know, tomorrow night saying that oh, his announcement is what tipped everything over the edge. But it's also a sign that he is more afraid of Garland and all the other investigations and how it's hitting his kids, surprise witnesses, maybe even raids on other properties, including his family properties. All of this is hitting right now, guys, and it is terrifying him. In Ohio, and with it, get this, a possible 2024 presidential announcement. Sources telling CNN the former president may announce his 2024 presidential bid tonight on the eve of the midterm elections. Trump spent the weekend visiting Iowa, Pennsylvania, and Florida, talking way more about himself than about Republicans on the ballot this year. That includes constantly reminding other Republicans of his influence, that message Director, not only at GOP leaders who might soon have a lot of power in Congress, but also at Republicans debating whether to challenge Trump for the 2024 nomination. Our reporters back at the table. On Friday, we were talking about people around Trump said he might announce as early as November 14th. Mm -hmm. Why would he do it tonight in Ohio before the midterm vote is even counted? He is chomping at the bit. He's chomping at the bit to get out there uh, and to make it official. And most importantly, in the short term, He's doing it for two reasons. One is uh, to take credit and to sort of ride the wave, even if it's just the House in the, in the sort of immediate hours uh, tomorrow, to ride the wave of what he believes will be a win in, in the House and claim credit because he'll say that he endorsed a lot of the candidates who won. Also, he's seeing a lot of his, his potential opponent, opponents, Republican opponents, out on the campaign trail. Never mind DeSantis, but he's seeing Nikki Haley out there. He's seeing... Uh, you know, Chris Sununu out there, he's seeing uh, Mike Pence readying a book tour as, as soon as next week or the week after. And he wants to get ahead of all of that. Right. Mike Pompeo is another, Mike Pompeo. One, another one out there. Uh, just, just yesterday, Tom Cotton, Arkansas Republican senator, we can show you the headline, uh, decided he's not going to run in 2024. I view that as making a conscious decision at the age of 45 uh, to avoid the human chainsaw. <laughs> uh, that, that got Marco Rubio and Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz in the last presidential campaign. His decision waited out, mm -hmm. waited out and see what happens. But you mentioned. Well, there's misinformation, yeah. disinformation, then there's Dony information. And that's, <laughs> that's stuff, in my experience, you can trust. Tony. I'll sign Tony up for that Sullivan. one. Thanks, Thanks so much. Joining us now to discuss David Gergen, former advisor to just four former presidents uh, Nixon, <laughs> Ford, Reagan, and Clinton. David, always good to have you. Listen, to, to Dony's report, you, report there. Disinformation is a real issue. Of course, the, the principal form of disinformation, right, is 2020 election denialism. And you have a lot of candidates on the ballot, many of whom are going to win uh, t tomorrow, who still deny the results of that election. So, so that's, that's a real danger. It's a real problem. I wonder, though, that in terms of a winning message, what was the democracy in peril message? It very well may very well be substantial, right? But was it the winning political message for this cycle, or should Democrats have focused more on the economy? Uh, definitely should have focused more on the economy. Mm -hmm. Listen, I, I, I'm among those who really worry about the uh, threats to our democracy that have, have arisen. But, but when it comes right down to it in the voting booth, uh, people are looking at questions of inflation. They're looking at questions of, you know, cost of gas and how much groceries they can keep that. And, and where is this all going? It's, it seems to be, we seem to be on the precipice or edge of a, a potentially deep recession. And I think that's having an enormous impact. But I say one other thing. What's also very disturbing is that this campaign, this strategy of disinformation on the Republican side, seems to be working. Yeah. You know, the 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 pendulum which swung out there for a while in favor of the Democrats has swung back pretty sharply. And I think a lot of that it, it comes from the fact that all of this disinformation that's being deliberately spread around, as you define it, Jim, mm -hmm. uh, is having an effect. Yeah. I mean, it there's also the very real possibility 
based on what we're seeing, that there could be a significant number of election deniers who could win their mm -hmm. races, yes. who could now be Absolutely. in power. How much appetite is there within the party? I think I know the answer, but I'm just curious your take. How much appetite is there within the party, the Republican Party, to actually push back on that and to call them out, especially after they're, you know, if they're now, let's say, in the House, sitting next to non-election denier Republicans, how does that play out? It plays out, I'm afraid, that if this is a big night for Republicans, and they think it's going to be, uh, that Donald Trump will be, it'll be a major, major victory for Donald Trump. And for his, his, his followers will be greatly energized if they come up with anything like the kind of uh, victory. You know, if they turn two or three, four seats in the Senate, they control the Senate, they control the House. That's going to be seen. It's going to be hard to stop Trump within the Republican Party. He will be, in effect, the very likely nominee of the party. You've worked with a lot of presidents. You've seen a lot of politicians come and go. Are you surprised that uh, less than two years after January 6th, after the Senate majority or minority leader, I should say, Mitch McConnell, said on the floor that Trump was responsible, the, the Republican speaker said Trump was responsible, that he would have had such a comeback? I, I'm, I'm hugely surprised. And it, I think it says something about Trump, but it also says something about the um, hunger for uh, among voters for something different, for something that actually works in their lives. And, and, and they will forgive Trump, it appears, on a variety of different fronts if he can deliver in getting the inflation rate and the job rates up. Uh, and I'm kind of better control. He has seen, um, you know, the Democrats generally are, are given more uh, uh, confidence votes uh, if, for their capacity to deal with the economy. And I think here, though, it's it's because of uh, Trump's strength, his personal strength, and the fact he's so defiant so often, it somehow he appeals to a segment of the voters in this, in this country that many of us don't know. You know yeah. They're not particularly among our set, and, and we find it confusing mm -hmm. uh, and uncertain. It's almost as if we could wake up Wednesday morning and wonder what country we're living in. So listen, I wanted to play those two clips because one, it situates the danger of Donald Trump, obviously, how the disinformation and the big lie is going to go into overdrive in every single close race that the GOP loses. Mark my words, if like Lauren Boebert loses her seat or if they lose any of the close Senate seats, it's going to be hell to pay and it's going to be a little mini big lie all over the all over again, except it's going to be not centered on one presidential race, but rather on dozens, if not even hundreds hundreds of GOP losses at the local and state and, you know, regional level and all of that. But fundamentally, guys, this is also about his fear. Don't forget that this man has been hit by so many legal issues. Don't forget that you have high profile people like Michael Cohen suggesting that other properties need to be searched. Don't forget that the DOJ and FBI have even been asking people if Donald Trump moved boxes to other properties, potentially leading to searches of his, you know, Trump Tower, of his golf course, of, you know, Ivanka's properties and Jared's properties and the other kids' properties and any properties where Donald Trump might have stored things. Don't forget that in his, the, the recent criminal case against his company, you've already had witnesses dropping surprising bombs on Trump and his company based on their years, if not decades and generations of experience within the company. Right now, you can see why he wants to do this. We've already explored this. Two big reasons. One, he can try to claim some victory. Two, he can push everybody else out of the field before they even get a chance. If he gets momentum, it might scare off a DeSantis or a Pence or a Haley or a Pompeo, people who are young enough that maybe they feel they can just wait four years and Donald Trump will have a clear path to the nomination. But don't underestimate the legal issues. Whether it's accurate or not, whether it's fair or not, whether it's true or not, Donald Trump feels in his heart and in his gut and in his weak little mind that as soon as he announces he's going to run, he is free of any legal consequences. Probably him and his company and his kids and all of that. And that's why if he does it tonight, that's the main reason. All of the other legal issues, I think, are the biggest factor. The political stuff matters, but I think he believes to himself more in his ability to win the primary than survive a legal challenge. Because if you look at the polls, objectively, 
Donald Trump's in a strong position. But you look at the evidence in the criminal cases, objectively, the man almost certainly did crimes and his company is guilty of all these civil issues. So he thinks to himself, much easier to win the GOP primary than defeat, you know, hard-nosed people like Letitia James. So I'm going to get back in as soon as I can. That's why if he does it tonight, no confirmation, but if he does, it's because he's afraid about, about what could happen to him and Ivanka and his company and all of that. He's running on board time. That's why he wants to run now.